Okay, so here's a summary slide showing a block diagram uh, for um, a, a model for that transfer function. And, and I want to show you how to build models like this using a transfer function form. Uh, remember, in control and simulation loop, which is what I'm using here in LabVIEW, you know, we've looked at using blocks and formula nodes to write the equations and math script and so on. But you can also go in and use transfer function models, and that's what this block is right here. And uh, I'm going to show you how to use that. I'm going to show you how to put in the parameters that you need, and then, and then what you can do is simulate directly. You can, you can treat that. That's your box. You've got you've got an input uh, voltage, output theta, and the theta is then being plotted here. Right. Note that I'm using this should look familiar from the lab. We use something like this. This is kind of just a scheduled um, over different periods of time, you're given a desired uh, position. By the way, I use Q here for theta d, so that's Q d is desired position. So the desired position depends on where you are over time. You can do this however you want. You can do this with um, with some other kind of sequencing or with a. You'll see later. You can use a signal generator here to determine what you want as your desired position. And note then the, you take your desired position and you go through the uh, static game model, right? Um, and um, so this is this is essentially the open loop control if you think about it. Your and this kvq is is the uh, kv theta, right? So you're multiplying by theta to get the desired voltage. So right here you have voltage at that signal, and then it goes. And I, I put a limiter here because I don't want that to be any larger than what can actually go into the system. And we're limiting this strictly to what can go out of the MyDAC. Um, the, the, um, the setup that you have in the lab uh, is 0 to 15 volts, depending on how you've sized it. So you would want, not want this to, to be any larger than that. Otherwise, you'd be out, uh, overranging it. And uh, actually, the MyDAC can't go about 15 volts on the analog out can. So it can only be 0 to 10. So you should put 0 to 10 as your limits on here. OK? So there's a couple of things I want to show you. Uh, what's on the front panel? I'm going to show you that on the actual VI. And note there's another VI that's, that I'll show you on, on, on the, um, and actually allow you what, what this is. This, this is uh, called a, uh, um, a, a transfer function construct, and I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so let's, let's actually move into the, into the actual VI. And so let me bring the context help in. Okay, so I was just on this VI, so I'm bringing it up. You can see this is a CD construct transfer function model. And there's actually a couple slides that, uh, that, that describe this a little bit, and I'll jump back to those in a second. But that's what that is there. This is a uh, transfer function, okay? And um, I'm going to go to the front panel. You can see what's coming into here, you need to give it a symbolic numerator. What that means is show it the numerator and then also the denominator for the transfer function. So you can put the model in exactly the way we just derived it. And then you also, uh, let's not worry about that for now. You can actually put a delay. We won't, we won't use that. But then there the variables. So within the symbolic numerator, you can have... Uh, this, you know, the different parameters that way we have, and then you can also put in a cluster in here uh, that has the relationship between the different parameters that you have here and the actual numerical variables. And again, I'm going to show you how to do that. So um, let me just jump back to yeah. So look at this slide. This is a, I'll put this in here for reference for you, so you can see this CD construct transfer function allows you to build models of this sort. Right, you could have your own model you know, higher order transfer function. But what you want to put in there, this is the numerator, right? And this is the denominator. So what it allows you to do is, is determine, okay, based on the, on the order or the number of elements you'd have in these cluster defini definitions of the numerator and denominator. For example, here you have one, two, three parameters that you need to define. Here, uh, there's no S on top, so it's only of, of um, the zeroth order, so you only have the constant term. So you can see here's here's what the front panel is going to look like. The numerator only has the kqv, which is this term here, and then you can see that you go in ascending order. So this is the zeroth term, and then 
the first uh, first order and second order terms are zero in the, in the numerator, but in the denominator, right, you have omega n squared. And see how you can define these symbolically? And they have two zeta omega n, right? So it's, there's two times zeta times omega n. That's your, sec your, your first order. And then this, the uh, second order polynomial has just uh, unity, right? So that's the symbolic numerator, symbolic denominator. But then you can have this other cluster that you can create um, on your block diagram. And here's where you can define, see the parameters that you use to define these terms and uh, the associated numerical values, right? So it's a really nice way of building that transfer function model. Okay, so just I can show this to you um, on, on the actual lab view, but the, the menu path, you go to control design simulation, it, in case you build this, because I'm going to give you the VI, but I'm going to put gaps in it, and uh, you're going to have to build some of this on your own. But the control design simulation, the, we go to control design, and under model construction, model construct here, you can pop up, and here's the CD construct transfer function, VI. Okay. Okay, so let's go to the uh, back to the actual. So here's actually the front panel. For that, uh, for that VI, I just showed this to you. Here's the symbolic numerator, symbolic denominator. All everything's defined here. And note, I've also defined in a uh, in a constant the uh, static gain. Um, where did I get this number? Uh, I, I I have 90 degrees over. Remember the rate, the uh, the uh, the I ideal performance of that meter is you get 90 degrees for 15 volts input. That's where that comes from. It's 90 over 15 is uh, 6, and then flip that over, and that's 1 6, right? So this is the, the ideal model. And I put in some values in here. So actually, there's the 6, and so that's the K, that's KQV. That's the inverse of that. This is zeta. I'm putting in a value here of about 0.3, and omega n, you're, you're, you're 6 so radians per second. Remember, that's in radians per second. You're going to measure these uh, for uh, in the lab. Um, but I, I have some starter values in there, and uh, let's uh, jump back to the block diagram so you can see what everything is. There's, so remember, this is on a control design simulation loop, so you're actually solving things here, because when you create a when you create a transfer function model here, you do have it, it, it does simulate those models. Uh, so this is uh, you specify a solver and so on, and uh, I think everything's defined. Let's look at how this runs. So. I've got everything set. I've got a small step size there, but anyway, so it's going to do the stepping on the input voltage because I want to I want to take that to the same kind of motion plan as you saw in the lab, and so just run this, and you can see it ends up looking a lot like what you should have seen in the lab, right? You you step from zero up to about twenty uh, degrees, and you can you get a little overshoot and some oscillation. So that's about what you should have seen. So. Um, uh, one of the things, so this is your pre-lab one, I want you to rebuild this model based on what I'm showing you here. I'm going to give you a starter VI that looks like something like this, but I'm going to just take things out so that you can practice connecting everything yourself. Okay. Okay, so the last, the second pre-lab was about determining the parameters experimentally, and you can do that a lot of different ways. Um, you can um, actually try to use your log decrement, which is what I'm kind of showing on this slide. There's a lot of detail on here, but you can see what I did is this is actually a, a trace of a signal measured from a step input. And um, that's one way to use log decrement data is this thing is decaying um, exponentially. So I'm using that to estimate zeta. So you can see uh, I, I did that here to get a log decrement. And then I also uh, very crudely got the peaks here from those oscillations, but re remember with your uh, with with your system because of the way uh, you're running it, you can only run it so fast. So you're going to have um, disparate points. So the the smaller you can get that delta t, the better. You can see that my estimates are pretty crude here, um, but uh, what I what I'm doing is by looking at the difference between peaks, I'm estimating right the damped period. From the damped period, I can estimate the damped natural frequency, right? 
Once I get zeta then from a very crude estimate just from two points uh, uh, and I know what I'm doing, I'm using cursors off the experimental data off the MapView chart here, uh, the XY graph. Uh, here are the cursor, here's the cursor data. I'm estimating zeta and then once you have, remember once you have zeta and omega d you can pull out omega n and now you've got everything you need for your experimental model. Okay. The other way you can do that is if you have a little model of your like we just looked at, uh, and you can just tune that uh, simulation that you have, tune your zeta and your omega n until it looks very close uh, to, to what you saw experimentally. What I'm going to do is let you determine what's the best way to go about doing that. Okay.